Today is all about shoulder pain. Now, shoulder pain, often, if you go and get it treated, your shoulder hurts, you get it treated, it gets better, beautiful. That you're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> if you have a shoulder issue, you go get treated, and it doesn't get better, then these are some things I want you to start thinking about, okay? The first thing is breath. Now, this is amazing. If you have a movement that you know is painful, I'm sure you do, so I often will test people in that range of motion. You know, sometimes they can't can't get above 90, or um, you know, doing up your bra strap. That internal rotation is painful. Whatever it is for you, do that motion now, and then go and lie down because it's easier to do this lying down. <laughs> go and lie down and do some beautiful breathing belly breaths into your belly. Okay, why is this such a big deal? Nine times out of ten or more. When I test someone on and, and ask them to take a deep breath in who has chronic shoulder and, and neck pain, is they'll breathe a deep breath in and they'll lift up their shoulders on the inhale, okay? So that lifting up motion, that's not how we're designed to breathe, that's not how we're designed to move, and we breathe approximately 17,000 times a day. So imagine on some level doing that a little bit all day long would be very impactful to the mechanics of what's going on in your shoulder and your neck, okay? So this is really neat. Whenever I test someone and find the range of motion that's painful for someone, I then immediately get them to do nice breathing mechanics. So breathing into your belly, all the way below your belly button, breathing into your lower back, even breathing into your upper back, and really focusing on not letting the shoulders go up on the inhale. Your chest can go out, of course, but the up part is what's really straining to the shoulders, okay? And then when you practice that for say, five, six, seven breaths, and then go and do that same range of motion that hurt, you will be amazed because so often, that pain has shifted even a little bit, even a little bit. So it's either less painful or the person has more range of motion. Sometimes it doesn't shift it, but still practice that because it can be a huge piece of the puzzle. Even the lucky ones are the ones that go, oh my gosh, in two minutes I shifted that my pain. And that's what I love to show people that's possible so that you can then know it's gonna come back in two seconds because you haven't that hasn't become your normal pattern but you're gonna shift that pattern over time and you can see the outcome is going to be very, very beneficial, okay? Now, the other reason why the shoulder can be challenging to treat is there's a lot of moving parts, literally moving parts. So it's the most mobile joint in our body, okay? And so that makes it the most unstable, right? Because we have all this ability to do all these amazing things with it, <laughs> but that comes at a cost. So the goal always is to keep everything strong, right? And then that will help the joint. Now, your rotator cuff muscle, sometimes people say, oh, I tore my rotator cuff. What does that mean? The rotator cuff is actually made up of four smaller muscles, okay? And their job, so they all attach onto your shoulder blade. So one's on the top here, a lot of people, that's a common one to tear. And then you've got two at the back, Okay, and then one on the front of it, so <laughs> right next to the back of my rib cage. Okay, and you can see in those photos where those muscles are. They all work together. Now, what is their job? As I move my arm, their job is to pull down the head of this bone here. It's your humerus. So as I lift my arm up, my big old deltoid here, it's supposed to lift my arm up. But all those rotator cuff muscles, it's like a pulley system. They're pulling it down and this one's pulling it up. Serious physics going on here. <laughs> so as you can see, this nice fine balance with all these different muscles with the most mobile joint in the body, you can see how it can be a bit of a disaster. <laughs> For some people, when there's chronic posture issues, that chronic breathing pattern on top of it, Oh my goodness, that's so straining for these. And the rotator cuff muscles, they're not huge muscles, right? So you really wanna make them happy. Now, 
There's also, <laughs> there's, I'm gonna give you two really great exercises to focus on uh, and tell you why so it makes more sense to you. Now, just doing external rotation, as you can see in the photo, you're starting with your elbow at 90 degrees, elbows tight to your body, and then you're just moving your forearm out. You can do it with both uh, forearms or just one, whatever you like. And lots of people will do this with an elastic band or weights, whatever it may be. I'd like to say you can do that range of motion in lying, which can be very beneficial because what that one does, that motion does out to the side, external rotation, is it wakes up and strengthens the muscles that are at the back of the shoulder blade. Those two that are part of the rotator cuff muscles that are at the back. Now with our posture commonly rolling forward, those muscles get really tight because they're lengthened but when they're lengthened in this position, they become weak, okay? So that's a really great place to start, and if you can link your breath to that exercise, even better, of course, right? Because you're really training that movement pattern, and your breath at the same time makes it a winning exercise. Now, there's another stabilizing muscle and this is a muscle between the shoulder blades, as you can see in the photo. There's two there, it's just showing one, I think. But there's two muscles that crisscross. So here's your spine, here's your shoulder blades, and then there's these two muscles that bring, their job is to retract, to bring the shoulder blades, you know, stable and closer to the spine, okay? So when, again, when we have that posture with the tendency of going forward, we're gonna strengthen them, or. Uh, lengthen them and weaken them okay so now watch this really important thing especially I find for females so our tendency when we t especially if you're a little bit flexible from last week if you're higher on that rock bottle scale we talked about in the last week's video with with being flexible so so often when we correct our posture or work on our posture we're doing this motion right so our shoulders are a bit forward and we do this motion but what am I really doing right now? I'm just extending my spine, okay? That, no, not anymore. You're not gonna do that. <laughs> All I want you to do is bring your shoulder blades closer to your spine. Shoulder blades closer to your spine, see that? Instead of this, this, this. That's really just compressing your spine, okay? so. Waking up those muscles in the upper back before you do any type of, excuse me, exercise for the arm and the shoulder, something you might be doing already, even if you're doing something, maybe the wall crawl, walking up the wall with your hand, if the wall was right beside me, then you would really think about stabilizing that shoulder, but not basically sticking out your chest will create more compression in the spine. We don't like that. It's not a good pattern either. <laughs> okay, so really waking up all the stabilizing muscles around your shoulder blade is how we win. If we connect that with breath, oh, so a great exercise is lying on your back if your shoulder is especially really sore, shoulder blades slightly together, deep belly breath. Exhale, relax everything. And do five or six of those. That's a brilliant way to start. And that sometimes even helps crazy things like low back pain and stuff. That's, that's because so often this forward posture is really creating a lot of different strains in the body. So correcting that with that small movement, it's all about small movements, um, is very, very, very powerful. Okay, so correcting shoulder pain uh, using proper breathing mechanics and stop doing this when you do a deep inhale or you're probably doing this on some level uh, all day long if that's your pattern shifting that pattern starting in lying position okay lying position is the easiest to change breathing patterns and to work on them on them so you want to breathe into your lower belly below the belly button into your lower back and then even into your upper back there's a muscle that we stimulate there which is really really helpful and then when you want to wake up your rotator cuff muscles a great place to start is that external rotation and the shoulder blades slightly together okay so again really like i've said in other videos the tendency is for 
the front of the body's muscles to get a little shorter and tend to be a little stronger than the back of our body. The back of our body tends to get a more lengthened, but a little bit weaker. Okay, those are general guidelines, of course, but don't forget that breath. It's magnificent, magnificent for helping to shift shoulder pain. And so is waking up those tiny little stabilizers at the back of your rotator cuff and even uh, the ones I just mentioned between your shoulder blades. Let me know how it's going. I'd love to know which range of motion, <laughs> if you were able to correct it even a little bit after you practice some beautiful belly breathing. Love to hear about it in the comments. And as always, more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Alrighty, until next week, bye-bye.